um, for this one, looking for, and it's, I think it's called the Intermediate Value Theorem. In part A, they just really want to know what H of 3 is and H of 1 is. Okay? So H of 3 is F of G of 3. And then H of 1 is F of G of 1. This is the easy part. The tougher one is, is coming up. So this one, you go G of 3. G of 3 is 4. And then F of 4 is negative 1. And then F of G of 1. G of 1 is 2. F of 2 is 9. Okay. In the formula, though, they're subtracting 6 each time. So this R, H of R, needs to be somewhere between negative 7 and 3. And is negative 5 between there? Yeah. Yep, so we won that round. Uh, let's try the next round. Next one says... Explain that there must be for h prime of c negative 5 between that. So in part b, what you're doing is h prime of 3 and h prime of 1. Now notice that when I take this derivative, though, it's not just f prime of g prime of 3. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be great? But that's not the, the uh, Tootsie Pop rule. The Tootsie Pop rule says that it's f prime of g of 3 times what? g prime of 3. Same with this one. f prime of g of 1 times g prime of 1. Okay, so let's do it. Looking at the chart, uh, g of 3 is 4. Then f prime of 4 is 3. So this is going to be 3 times g prime of 3 is 2, which is going to give me 6. By the way, uh, what happened to this negative 6 when I took the derivative? 0, so we're fine with that. Uh, g of 1, g of 1 is 2, f prime of 2 is 2, so this is going to be 2 times g prime of 1. g prime of 1 is 5. Right? So this is going to be equal to I got 6 and I got was that 10? Wait a minute. What did I do wrong? Well that, that seemed like it would work but I think what they're, they're saying is that there might be something happening in between. Maybe a non-differentiable part. So what they did is they went h of, let's see, h of c, h prime of c, is between h of 3 minus h of 1 over 3 minus 1. So if we did h of 3, which was negative, what is that, negative 7 minus 3 over 2, I get negative 5, and is h prime of c equal to negative 5? It's actually equal to it, so therefore it worked out. That was weird. I, I would think you do the same thing as you did here, but it didn't quite work that way. And the only way you could prove it is if you did this and it was equal to that negative 5. Uh, let w be the function here. Find the value of w prime of 3. Oh, that looks horrible, doesn't it? Looks terrible. Well, it's not. The derivative of x is going to be the derivative of the antiderivative. So it's the, if you take the derivative of the antiderivative, what do you get? Derivative of the antiderivative of the function is just what? F of 
g of x. This will just be f of g of x. So in part c, this whole thing is f of g of x. And then would you just for fun just put the derivative of g of x in there too? That's what the derivative of this is going to be. So we're looking at it at 3. It should be f of g of 3 times g prime of 3 is what that should be. So let's see if it's right. g of 3 is 4. f of 4 is negative 1. This is negative 1. g prime of 3 is 2. Yeah, I wonder if it's right. Let's see. I got negative two. What is what? Yes, that's right. Okay, so what I did is I took the derivative of the antiderivative from one to g of x of f of t dt. So if you take the derivative of the antiderivative, all you're going to do, all you're going to do, let's say this was x. Let's just make this x what would this be? The derivative of the antiderivative of f of t going from 1 to x, what would it be? f of x. Yep. So that's what it would be if it were x. Now since it's g of x, it's just going to be f of what? g of x. No big deal. But there, it, what's the derivative of x? 1. What's the derivative of g of x? g prime of x. Then that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. And this is me personally. This is what AP has right in spades. Is this, this is how calculus is used in today's day and age. Data listed out on a spreadsheet, and then they analyze things like slopes and gradients and things like that. This is, this is good stuff. Uh, 4D, I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But I just want to tell you that the derivative of the inverse, the derivative of it, just going to give you this. Would you write this down? Is 1 over the derivative of g, was it g inverse? Yeah. g derivative of the inverse of g. Write that down. That's a seldom known <coughs> formula. Does that look crazy? Does that look like a horrible formula? It looks like there's no way it would have like the simplest of derivations, right? There's no way that uh, if I went f of f inverse of x, what's that equal to? Do you remember what f of f inverse is? Like the square root of x squared, what is it? x, right? So this is just x, right? Take the derivative of both sides, what do you get? 1 on this side. What's this derivative? Chain rule. f prime of f inverse of x times what? The derivative of the inverse, right? So what if I'm solving for this? What's it going to be? One over the derivative of f inverse of x. Hey, you learn something new every day. Seemed like it'd be hard, wouldn't it? Didn't it? Didn't it? 